artists everywhere are feeling something like this to a certain extent. People are getting sick of short form. I think people are going to want that authenticity again. We got on a major playlist. We are blowing up right now. Something's happening. This is almost like a therapy session of us talking through where we need to be at. They mastered the Chainsmokers album and they're going to master this song. Five years ago, we were sitting in my parents' spare bedroom in Fond du Lac, and Ben would be working as an intern at a company while I was working a summer gig for the city, um, running parts for people and driving around. And there'd be days when I would drive around all the way over to Fond du Lac at the other side of town where he was working. And I'd just be like, hey, Ben. I'd be window. sitting in my office window and he'd text me. He's like, I'm driving by right now. Because all we could think about was getting done at 3 o'clock and getting to that spare bedroom to work on music. And You got done at 3? I got done at 5. Oh, maybe it was 3.30 or 4. Okay. I yeah. think I was done before you because I always remember yeah, getting yeah. home before. Um, but we'd get done and we'd meet there every day and we just tried to get better every single day. Uh, cause we used to not be good at all, but we knew what we wanted to do. And that's usually all you need is, is, um, is a goal. When we started the smallest things were like, so exciting and it, even if it didn't even really mean much you know for example our first song ever uh we got it mastered and i texted michael i'm like dude you're not gonna believe this we are paying someone and they are doing it for us because we are paying them and they mastered the chain smokers album and they're gonna master this song it was like holy shit we get to pay them and they're you know like it's just kind of funny to look back on, you know, like we we're, we're excited. We were so excited about, uh, about people who were connected in music that, uh, that would like respond to us or, uh, work on something or whatever it was, even if it's the smallest thing, like mastering a track and we're literally like paying them to do it. You know, it's like, Oh yeah. I'll, why wouldn't they do it? We're paying them, you know? We used to even have a lot of fun using Submit Hub, and uh, which, if you guys aren't familiar, it's a website where you could submit your songs to playlists, blogs, uh, influencers, whatever. And back in 2019, when, when you were first starting out, before, you know, TikTok surged, um, this felt like a really great way to do that. And I remember when we would get some responses, it would be like, oh, we didn't get this one. But we just got a response saying yes from um, Tropical Vibes. They're going to put their this on their YouTube channel. And it was just like every little thing, because our curiosity was so high, it always felt like we had a leg up on everyone because it was like, man, we just feel like we were learning all these things. We know so many of these things, every time we told our friends or the people we knew in Wisconsin, it was like, we're doing this, like, we're doing this, like, listen to our music and be like, you know, everyone, when they say listen to their music, they would say, oh, okay, yeah, I'll do it. But then when we'd get the responses, wow, this is actually maybe mm -hmm. something I would listen to. We'd always say that's the best response because when you have people that you grew up with or people in your hometown kind of legitimize you it felt really good i remember when i was at my nine to five internship and the person that was sitting at the desk across from me for like i worked i, don't, I think i worked there for four months for like the summer may to august or whatever um i think it was in august uh the person across from me like found out about the music or asked about it and i i sent him the song and he listens to it and he goes, wow, this is like real music or this mm -hmm. is like actual music, you know? And I'm like, dang, like, you know, like that's, that's a cool feeling. 
It, it, we had so much uh, just joy over just the smallest things. I remember when our song All In first came out and we go on Spotify for artists and we see there is 16 people listening to it right now. And I send Michael a video and I'm like, we got on a major playlist. We are blowing up right now. Something's happening, you know? I think the world just felt so small, but yet so big because it was like we were seeing all of these cities that were listening to us and even countries and nothing else in our life felt more important at the time either. Um, you know, we were going to school, so we obviously had homework and jobs to worry about. But we would always know that at the end of the day, we would get home and we would just start to work on this thing that we were trying to build and take to the moon. And there was just so much genuine joy that came from that. And it was so easy as a 19-year-old that had a dream to be like, I'm going to take all the time I need and take so much advantage of this time that I have right now to make this a reality. Um, Biggest challenge is we are independent. We want to keep it that way. And we've built all of this with a great team from nothing. So now it feels like there's a lot of business pressures of, you know, putting out singles all the time. That model isn't necessarily friendly, especially for independent artists. You know, like there's definitely a FOMO factor too of, well, if we're not doing it, then, you know, everyone else is and they're, they're the ones getting the streams if we're, if we're not doing the single route. You know, so that that's that's kind of a challenge too. But at the core of the astronomers, for me, I just love making music, and I love putting out songs. So like I, I could definitely be happy, probably just in like a different way of just always putting out songs and not even overthinking it. Just just vibing. Just be like, oh, made this song. This is this is dope. Put it out. But there is a part of me that's like man like i i miss i miss when people were fans of albums and when people you know when albums could like at least get a chance and cut through cuz it feels like unless you're Zach Bryan or Taylor Swift or Post Malone albums for people that are up and coming have almost zero uh you know regard or space in terms of like is it even practical anymore you know in terms of like just streaming and the business behind it, you know, and it's, it switched so fast within the last, I'd say four years, you know, it, I mean, TikTok and reels and shorts, that's the, that was the nail in the coffin for, for albums in terms of, uh, smaller acts, I would say, I don't know. Does that, would you agree with that? As being the biggest challenge? Yeah. Yeah, I don't agree to the conclusion that you always end up with. Um, I don't think it's a nail in the coffin. I think albums will resurface. I, mm -hmm. I, I truly believe that people are getting sick of short form. I, I think people are going to want that authenticity again. They're going to want that less cut, that less edited version of something. Um and I, I think it just there needs to be people that start doing it and not following what everyone else is doing. Yeah, may, maybe the maybe forms of content. Maybe it's like, maybe it's like fashion where like back in what was it seventies or eighties, everyone had shorter shorts, and then like in the early two thousands, it went back to baggy. Clothes long, always you know? change, ideas always change, and a lot of the times we're just recycling. Yeah. So I mean, look at vinyl, like that used to be such a big thing and then everyone was like that's never going to resurface again now there's an ipod you know, an mp3 mm -hmm. player and cds came and they're going to take over it and now look vinyl is back to being one of the biggest things that you can get as a fan um but i mean we look at our 
our our biggest inspirations in AJR, and they still truly believe in the album rollout, but they never didn't believe in that, even when they were small and up and coming. And I mean, Twenty One Pilots, for instance, they go completely dark before they go and release another album, and and that's kind of where I go back to, like being more happy getting income somewhere else to provide for my family and for my life than to sacrifice the way we do things like the way we would love to do things because it's like i don't want to wake up every day and and think to myself that i'm not doing this love that we have together in a way that we don't really love it um so that is the biggest challenge, is that tackle right there. Um, yeah, it's an ongoing conversation. Yeah. It was songs like Roses by the Chainsmokers. It was I'm Not Famous by AJR. Um, and like, I just had this curiosity of, how did they do that? You know, like how, how'd they make that sound so good? And I just started watching YouTube videos and I just had such an enjoyment for it because I saw every time I opened up GarageBand or Logic Pro or whatever I was using in the very early stages, just the, the empty project. And then you just see it, you can just feel there's infinite possibilities and it's all up to you. There's no one telling you what you can do, what you can't do. And that it's just, it's just so fun. So like now that we do it every single day and we have, we know how we work, we have our creative process. We have made hundreds of songs. Um, and a lot of the time, it's not like, I don't want to say we're on autopilot, but there's a lot of that like initial like discovery on how to do things is kind of gone. So one thing we should like do more is focus on like, what is something we have never done before in, in the creation process, you know? Cause like, it's like we, you know, we pull up the vocal chain, we, we write, I do it all it's we're just we got we just we kind of figured it out and we were fast now and and back then i think the real joy was constantly learning and constantly discovering and we're still doing that but it's not as a it's not like at the same rate you know if that makes sense yeah no i know i know what you're saying um just to word it in a different way um, I think because we've gotten so quick at what we're doing, it used to be like we would get so excited about a demo because it took us forever to get that demo sounding the way we wanted it to. Yeah, I would think like, hell yeah, we finally have a decent song. Like, I hope I hope this doesn't run out. Like, I hope we can do this again in the next two months. But also maybe our bar is just higher. Maybe yeah. it's like we're just not making the best music right now because we're not getting like, I mean, like we just made a song yesterday and we both really loved it. But, like, I'm saying, like, we make a song and it's just like, oh, like, we have those every yeah, once in a while. Yeah, we we did one. We did. About yeah, and we have. And we and we do every once in a while. Um, but that's why I think it's it's. um. And we're, we're just steering off. But um, I think, yeah, you, you we started making music because we loved how it made us feel, you know, like. We loved watching our favorite artists go on tour and watching their shenanigans on tour and the vlogs that they would make and just hearing like I just remember like the feeling I would get watching like an old Quinn 92 um, tour where he was playing, you know, these three 400 cap rooms um, and, you know, 
the uh, like straight jacket would be playing as like the song in the background when he's on the stage and it's like Detroit, Michigan, you know, Cleveland, Ohio. And it's just like each room and stuff and just the quick flow between the rooms and it's just that song playing. And I'm like, I can't wait. And so we're on tour playing these rooms and we've got like a song of ours playing over the background and like people know that song and that gets them excited. And maybe we're going to inspire somebody else to want to do this. And I think once you start to like accomplish or see out some of these things that you've always wanted to do, your mind naturally starts to think, oh gosh, what's that next thing that I need Mm -hmm. now to like want so bad to feel that way again? So I'm not just not feeling good when we're doing all these things that 19 year old us are freaking out that we're getting these opportunities to do. And it's always so hard to put yourself into that place. But that's why, you know, we always talk about like just genuinely thinking about our happiness first and foremost all the time because nothing in life is going to make you feel good if you're not happy doing it. And, um, and you know, people do that all the time. You know, something in a job comes up that doesn't, they don't wake up and feel happy about doing. They, usually either wait it out, see if they can figure it out, or they leave that job and they go find something else that makes them happy. And, you know, that's why, you know, we've built up something that we're so thankful for that we get to do on that we worked really hard to get to five years of. Um, But we also have to constantly remind ourselves, you know, to be joyful and happy and to find those things that give us that. Because, you know, when, when it's all said and done and we're done with the astronomers, like, you know, we want to look back and be proud and we want to look back and and not be regretting a certain time frame where we just didn't make the right decisions or we just weren't, we were just getting by because we were doing it in a way that felt right at the time, but it wasn't going to long-term make us happy. And I think that's something that we have a really good skill about is, is communicating those feelings and those thoughts so early on so they don't blow up into something that will later on make us not feel good. Um, but yeah, I think that's something that we do really well is we talk about why we started making music and why we love doing it in the first place. And, and I mentioned this to you, uh, to you the other day. Um, you know, for the first, what was it, like three years of it? Yeah, first like three years we would have like 30,000 or less listeners. And I remember, I think 2021, we were st- stuck around like 25,000 listeners. And if it felt like a lot at the time, like it really, it, it felt like really cool. And like, damn, like we have 25,000 people a month that listen to us. And then, you know, there's a few months later, we hit 30,000. and We went up by... 5,000 listeners and it was just like hell yeah we are killing it and now we've kind of it feels like we've kind of become numb to it where it's like oh yeah we're at like 450 or 500,000 listeners like anywhere around there like we don't even really and we don't really like bat an eye at 50,000 listeners like that's bigger than the city that we're from and we we kind of just like don't really feel that i think part of the disconnect too is last year we did so many shows and this year we decide not to go on tour um and focus on the music so there's definitely like we're not we didn't see all the faces we didn't hear all the stories this year of people saying you know how one of our songs you know affected them or how they found it or a memory that was attached to it from them or whatever it's just and that's huge. It is. It's huge, and it's refreshing to like, not just see numbers and not just try to play the short form game and be like, "Oh, this TikTok got a thousand views. This one got five hundred. This one got three hundred. Meanwhile, you know, we see all of these other independent artists that all are also making great music that is similar to our style that are just absolutely crushing it on there, you know, and short form content, it's here to stay. And we're 
we're going to participate, but I think, I think, uh, us feeling just not as great about what we've been doing is because we were, we're chasing this like goal that isn't even really us, you know? Yeah. No, it's very well said. I think you brought up so many great points being at home, almost, um, quarantining ourselves into this studio um with not seeing faces all year is really hard to do um because you know like you said it's it's the best way to gauge your audience putting a face to the listener um but not to say we haven't been very very productive i mean we've we released a full-length album um a a uh, short EP with our friend Sammy Rash. And, um, you know, we're obviously stacking up a bunch of other songs right now, too. So we have, you know, really done our job that we set out to do. Um, but it kind of feels like it's not enough when you don't see that big number come through or that, you know, that amount of likes come through you know, everything that's digital because we set out to do a digital thing, which is release music. And we haven't, you know, seen like that big number come through, um, which is hard to do. But it's not to say, you know, that we haven't been productive this year and set out to what we want or done what we set out to do. Um, so another thing we talked about the other day was like how the way we used to do things, it kind of felt like every every fan, every person that was like following along, it almost felt like a team and we're more, we're putting out stuff that we, that we love and we think the fans will also be excited about, you know, and lately, um, and this is where the, the business part of it kind of like came in where it's like, we have to up our game with videos and content and short form and all that. It, it, at doing that, it feels like, where we just kind of like opted in to the machine like everyone else, you know, if that makes like, we have to, we still have to do it and we have to participate in it and it's, it's great. And there's a lot of benefits to it, but, uh, the enthusiasm and the vibes of almost like, this is the best kept secret. You know, my, I'm such a big fan of the astronomers and, you know, how are they not bigger kind of vibes. I f- it just feels a little bit different. Yeah, after people like that. Switched, after we switched to like full-blown like short form YouTube reels, TikTok and, yeah, you know, chasing. And I feel like every time we talk about this, we like answer our question out loud. Like that it, yeah. it isn't the, the thing for us, for us. Um, but there's still that like slice of pizza in our mind that's telling us to do it well there's the fomo part too because it's like right sure and it's not that we wouldn't still put out you know a short form piece of video every once in a while because we'd never have not done that um we just always used to strategically place them out like they would be thought of they would have you know if we would throw out a random video it would just be because we covered a song or something and it's like you know it's like this is almost like a therapy session of us talking through where we need to be at. And um, you know, you know, if you guys have any advice that you want to leave us to, we're we're always opening to hearing from you guys what you want to see from us. Like what genuinely makes you a fan? Like what brings you to subscribe to what the astronomers yeah, do? What, what brought you here? What was like the thing that because like, like, there's this, some days where yeah. it feels like we've lost sight of why people gravitated toward us because of the constant online persona or, you know, the, the constant rat race of the industry. And that's just not our vibe. It, our vibe is to be authentic to you guys and to be 100% ourselves and our music and love just giving you guys every bit of us um and so it's almost it's almost sad hearing it out loud um because it's like where did this come from you know it was like a decision we made that we thought would be for the better 
but it's almost gotten us to a point that we haven't been more unsure of in our careers, in our five five years of being in the astronomers. So really this whole video is like kind of, like I said, like a, a session just to like spew out how we're feeling about this whole project because we want to give you guys what you want, but also what we want. And it's it's been hard because there's a constant pressure from the industry to do it a certain way. People who are fans of music, do you genuinely enjoy finding music on short form platforms? Or is it just you are you kind of just on autopilot on your downtime and you and you find it and you're just like, that's cool, I'll stream it, that whatever, you know, or is or for our audience, do you prefer to like find bands and artists different ways and kind of be a part of them and and follow them and not necessarily watch all the short form you know with a microphone teasing the song in clever ways you know like i guess i don't know if that really even is the right way to ask i it. think that's what i was thinking just not exactly worded the like the same way i would have thought yeah. but I, that's kind of where i thought you were gonna go with i just it. didn't want to word it in a way that was like no worded the exact way that rating or just no like, no, no, no. worded you, that way okay is there anyone out there that that still uh follows bands like organically or is, or is short form like end all be all like this is how people find us i'm gonna say what i think <laughs> i i think there's definitely still both yeah. i think there's a lot of hardcore fans and you see them at the shows like like i know we always use ajr as a reference but their last one of their last posts when they talked about selling um msg out two days in a row um when they said that our music is for you guys. We just never knew there would be so many of you guys. Mm -hmm. That it, it's just put so simply amazing because people, like, we are all out there wanting to feel a part of something. And even, even and you know, this is no... This is no shame or shade to the uh, type of music that I'm about to reference, but even for the music that gets put out there that is very, you have it on in the car or with your friends because they won't laugh at you for listening to it, or you have it on during a basketball practice or it's in your earbuds as you're walking to class, where and if someone asks you what you're playing, you can be like, oh, it's the new Drake album. There's a, there is a, um, a lot of people that will genuinely say that that is their favorite music. Then there you've got your people there that deep down have something that they're looking for that they want to feel a part of, but it's too, it, it feels like it sets them into this vulnerable state that they don't feel comfortable in. But we know, and the reason AJR does such a good job is they stay true to that side. They don't conform to like a, um, a realm that they know is just going to do well and attract the majority, they are turning the majority into them. And that's why we love doing that kind of stuff so much is because we feel like by being authentically ourselves, we can turn these people that don't feel like they have a home yet with music to be fans of it if they give it a chance and find out that they like it. And I think that's the coolest thing about music is if you find if you do find someone or an artist or a band that is genuinely themselves, you can't help but root for it and love it if it fits you. And I think there are those people out there that want to be a part of something. They just don't know it yet. And that's why I feel like it's once they find it's like they find the astronomers and they're just like, where has this band been? Like they get all, we get those mm -hmm. comments before where it's like, where have you guys been? I've like been wanting to find songs like this. And that's the responses we want from people. Yeah. We want those like, today is August 1st, 2024. And I think I just found my forever band. Like I just found yeah. the band that I'm going to turn on every Friday after work because they get me ready for the weekend and, in the best way. And I think with that, that means 
us making music that doesn't follow normal structure, you know, like we want to do more things like we want to do more hums kind of songs. We want to do more that song just hit a million streams and we weren't even going to put it out. Hums was the weirdest song on the occasion in terms of just, it's just different. It was different yeah. for us. It was different for the whole project. We're like, we and don't care if this song gets 15,000 streams. I'm like, like, yeah, this is just like a filler one. This is, it'll be the least streamed track but on it, the we, album. But we thought it was cool. Yeah. And look what Treehouse did on our last album. Yeah. Same thing. I, I told him, I told Michael, I'm like, this is a really cool song. Really different. It, it's probably going to be the least streamed song because it's so weird and different. Turns out it was the best performing single mm -hmm. on the album. People want different. People want stuff that they don't even know that they wanted, you know? Mm -hmm. So we want to do more of that. We want to do more looser with structure, uh, more thought out, and not, not always making just simple beats not that we have been doing that i mean it feels like we have sometimes with with uh just the amount of music we're making you know that's why i think when we start to go to the whiteboard with this next album we kind of like carefully pick this album mm -hmm. because yeah we have a ton of songs right now but i think if we really want to narrow it down to the best we, we can do cut. that yeah we can do that and we can be we can have those conversations and those conversations are they're they're like they they involve a lot of back and forth but those are fun still for yeah. us like we love like getting together to like map out an album because it it brings out the best ideas in both of us where it's like I think this should be on it because of this and you're like well I feel like it's too similar to that song and I don't know if we need it but I think we should do this and I'm like oh well I don't know if I really like that chorus so maybe we have to revisit that that's that that's like the fun part about mm -hmm. being an independent band i think f is the way we should treat being independent is we have free range to do whatever we want not being independent because we need to do this because it's almost like then we're part of a label if we treat being independent as we have to follow what every other independent artist is doing it's like no we're independent because we're independent yeah. we can do whatever we want we don't have to vote for anyone but mm -hmm. ourselves yeah and that's i think what we can start to hone in on more um, choosing the lifestyle that we have is we could literally get up and set up our studio in the van and go drive around and make our music that way and no one's going to tell us not to right and um, change the scenery too yeah so that's that's we're just kind of like going off and talking right now but i think this is cool because i really hope you guys can listen to this as fans and just like understand at least what we're feeling um you know, I doubt fans are really even thinking about it, which they don't really have a reason to. They just they're listening. To, they're listening to the music. But I know for a fact. Artists everywhere are feeling something like this to a certain extent, you know, and we're the one we we get really caught up in it because that's what we do every day, you know, and it's this conversation every single day versus from a listener perspective that isn't knees deep in the music industry. Uh, they're just, they're consuming the music. So I would love to hear some like just fresh ideas from a totally different, fresh perspective from some, from people that are not involved in the music industry. People that are just, yeah. just fans of music in general or you know? other artists or other artists. If, too. if you're listening yeah. and you're like an artist of any size, maybe you're 10 times bigger than us or way smaller, whatever it is, that doesn't matter. Like when I say, when we say like, leave a comment, it's not like, Oh, leave a comment because we want engagement to go up. It's like, no, like we literally want to know we're not going crazy here thinking this way. And that there's more people here that have thoughts and feelings towards it. Like you said, whether it's a fan or an artist or anything, just like it, it, it is a big topic right now. And, um, like I, I want this to be heard. We want this to be heard with people to know that, like, what is the state of music right now? We want like to bring this topic to life. 
we feel like everyone is thinking it, but no one wants to talk about it. And just like we want more people to open up about this issue and, and this narrative and change it back to what music is all about. And that's making people happy through sound and making it, great songs for you and yeah. not not just rapid fire business short form and yeah like know. if you're going to work every day and and you're not and you're getting up and you're not happy what what needs to happen for you to be like realizing that something needs to change what what seriously like what needs to happen like or is it strictly only based on income like is it strictly only based on money and this is coming from people who like did this for four years not paying a cent like we put everything back into the project working other jobs to do it because we loved it and now that there is now that there's money now involved. that there's money involved it's like we need to remember for ourselves why we loved doing it when we weren't making money. And, you know, having that tough conversation and realizing maybe it's finding some other source of income so you can go back to it if it even happens. And that's just even saying, like, if something dips, but who cares as long as you're having fun and as long as you're doing it in a way that makes you feel good. Because... Being happy is the ultimate goal in life. And we just get to somehow feel that way through music. Yeah. Thank you for <sighs> listening. Have a great day. And um subscribe. <laughs> like, comment. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Just just totally go against yeah. everything we just said. What is up, guys? Thanks for watching the video. What is like, up, guys? Subscribe. Welcome back to another video. <laughs> All right.